Desperate times call for desperate measures. What's this? Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, oh, Dublin Airport plane. Co oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is a fucking amazing, amazing article. So, I saw this, um, I think just before I left to go burn that shit, I thought this was quite funny. Um, supposedly, somebody at the Dublin Airport was late um, in getting their plane. You know, when the whole, you know, you're... you're you, you get told many, many a times, right, when you book a ticket to go to an airport that, you know, you should try and get there four hours in advance, right? Just to, you know, accommodate for any kind of delays, just in case the flight is delayed or cancelled, so you have enough time to kind of schedule another flight, right? That's, kind of, that's why they tell you four hours, right? And also, maybe immigration might be crazy, crazy long queue. Because I remember, I remember seeing a picture, if you've ever been to Stansted Airport before, I remember seeing a picture, I think during the, the height of summer, maybe in July or June, um... I saw a picture of the immigration queue that was, and it snaked out all the way into the front of the, the kind of like, you know, of the doors of Stansted. You only come through Stansted, you kind of got all the like shops and shit and you got the, the place where you check in your luggage. I saw uh, a queue going from the immigration bit, which is like f on the far left, right? All the way until there. So it was, it snaked all the way through where the immigration bit is, past all the check-in points for all the different airlines and then all the way to the front of it. That's why I saw the queue. I was like, Jesus Christ. So that's why people, that's why airlines say you should get the four hours in advance just in case you you happen you to be unlucky enough to book your holiday during a real peak, peak time. And then sometimes as well, just in case your flight gets cancelled. But there's always that person or there's always those people that go to the airport. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because they're frequent flyers and they know that most of the time, you know, it's quite rare for flights to get cancelled right they do get delayed but they don't actually get cancelled completely it doesn't happen that often um i think it's happened to me maybe maybe once in my whole entire life of flying right um now again i haven't flown as many times as other people but i've flown quite often and it's only happened to me once so i guess maybe those people might think that you know your flight never gets cancelled usually gets delayed so they would leave it to last last minute my only um counter to it is that whenever i'm going on holiday it's either a day of booked off free or it's a day that I'm trying to get the most out of my holiday. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to leave after work or wherever it may be. Or I've worked from home. I've worked half a day. It's it's rare that I'm like at home and trying to just rest at home and chill. I want to go to my destination. So if I if I can get an hour ahead, I don't mind because I'm excited to go, right? So it's not. It's like I don't necessarily get the people that want to just like squeeze as much time as they can at home and get to the airport just on time. It makes no sense because you're going to wait regardless. You're going to wait in immigration. You're going to wait to get on the plane. You're going to wait uh, to get your luggage on there. You're going to wait for the plane to take off. You're going to wait when the train taxis. You're going to wait when the train when the plane lifts off. You're, every point in that air journey, you're waiting. There's not a point. You, you don't just go into a plane and it just takes off. It's always a wait. There's always a kind of a, del a delay that happens. So I don't necessarily get the whole like staying at home and then getting to the airport just when your plane's about to leave. And it's, it's a fucking annoying. It's super annoying, man. Like, God damn. Grown adults running down the immigration line. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I gotta leave my plane. It's like so. Every time that happens to me, I w I move. I move so. I know it's, it's horrible to do, but I move so slowly. I just I move as slow as I can. Like okay, there you go. Just to slow them down a bit to kind of get them more exasperated. And you hear them go, oh, oh man, oh man. It's like, dude, trust me. I'm not the one making you late. I guarantee you. Me, Agostino, is not the person that's making you late to go to your plane. It, you left your house. Um, I don't know, an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, and your plane's going to leave in 15 minutes. You made yourself late, not me. Trust me, I'm not one to make you late. And the airport somehow has to ac accommodate for these people. It's just annoying. I don't even... Sometimes it, they have to accommodate for them because you see the... Some a staff from the airport will kind of chaperone the person through, um, guide them through the kind of turnstiles, past the queue, and maybe get them through on another side of it. It's like, why are they getting preferential treatment because they're late? Why don't we all do that? Why can't we all, why can't we all wake up late? right wait at home right watch tv um have a sandwich um have a shit whatever it may be and then come late why can't we all do that because we're grown-ups that's why because we're grown-ups so this this absolute plunker right in dublin airport decides to do the same thing with disastrous consequences right disastrous story so i'll put this story up here and read it to you um dublin airport plane chasing passenger charged right plane chasing not even fucking gate chasing plane chasing a passenger has been pinned to the ground uh, by police in Dublin Airport after running out onto the terminal towards a plane, shouting at the pilot to wait. How he even got to the fucking ground? I don't know, right? Patrick Keogh, 23, made it to the taxiing um, 
Ryanair aircraft before police arrested him at seven o'clock in the morning. Which is oh, actually, I, I, I take that back. Whenever I've been on a Ryanair flight, especially the one I just got on this time in Berlin, usually Ryanair budget airlines, you, you don't have that thing. They don't, they don't let you walk through that uh, tube thing. You know that kind of like thing where you when you're in the airport. I don't sure what it's called. That kind of like tunnel from that the, you know, from the checking gate all the way to the aircraft. They don't usually you usually walk on walk on a tarmac. You know, it's a budget airline, so they usually walk with you on a tarmac and you just walk onto a plane. So I'm assuming the 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 kind of ticket person was still there. So uh, Patrick Keo, 23, made it to taxi and Ryanair aircraft before police arrested him at seven o'clock in the morning. He has been charged with criminal damage at the door lock and granted bail. A ground crew member said he just ran from the building towards the plane, which was departing for Amsterdam. Like imagine, 23 years old, he's got books to fly to Amsterdam. It probably cost him an arm and leg to get there, right? He probably didn't have any other money. Like, oh, got it for the lad. Um, <laughs> the Irish man was quite determined to make his flight. An eyewitness told the Irish broadcast T RTE, um, adding that he was ran towards the plane with his sub with his suitcase under his arm. What an absolute muppet, right? Uh, uh, BBC News, um, Duncan Harvey. Uh, Declan Harvey, who was at the scene, said that when the police arrived, there was a scuff where Mr. Keogh was pinned to the tarmac. That's him there, right, Mr. Keogh? Look him. Patrick Keogh shouted abuse waiting as waiting journalists as they appeared in court. Of course he did. Am I surprised? No. The guy who ran towards the train, uh, ran towards the fucking airplane, trying to bang its doors, right? I don't know how he jumped up that high or whatever he did, right? He tried to bang on an airplane to get it to stop like it's a fucking 26 bus, Right? is waving, is trying to abuse that fucking waiting journalist. I am not surprised. Um, Mr. Keo of, what that, what kind of village is that in, in fucking um, Ireland? What? Rahinig, Rahinas Kiga. Jesus Christ. Gory in County Wexford was brought before Dublin's district court later on on Thursday morning. There were no objections to the bail and Keogh was released on his own bond of £178. He is to appear again on the 8th of November. Mr. Keogh covered his face with a folder and shouted abuse at waiting journalists as he left the court before swinging his suitcase at the crowd, lowering his trousers to expose his backside. Ah, Mr. Keogh is a fucking legend. He used, to, he used to go on Big Brother. He used to go and fucking separate Big Brother, dude. Imagine you're in the wrong, dude. You, you're wrong. Imagine him being pissed off that the journalist at Wayne is in the court because he decided to run onto the tarmac and try and shout a plane down, right? And he's give he's fucking doing moonies to the to the journalist, the the brass, the guts on this dude, the guts on this guy. Jesus Christ! Um, the flight departed 21 minutes behind schedule, but reportedly landed on time in Amsterdam. In a statement, an airport spokesman said. A male and female passenger were late for a Ryanair flight to Amsterdam this morning and arrived at the boarding gate after the flight was closed. Uh, they were engaging with Ryanair staff at the gate and the male passenger was becoming agitated. He was banging on the window to try and get the aircraft to wait and made his way onto the uh, apron trying to flag the aircraft down. <laughs> Imagine trying to signal the plane, signal the plane, signal the plane that's just taking love. This fucking guy's a nutcase. The male district restrained by a Ryanair staff on the apron before air police arrived to the scene and tackled him to the ground and arrested him. This guy's a fucking nutcase, man. Mr. Keo, Mr. Patrick Keo needs to go on Big Brother. He needs to go on Big Brother so badly, man. This guy's an absolute nutcase. I'm, I'm assuming he's, um, the female was probably his girlfriend, right? Um, yeah, it's funny because I've got an interesting story, actually. I remember once I, when, I went to, when I was meant to go to Barcelona to run a half marathon, but I, I missed my flight. The only flight I've missed in my life, right? And that was, again, my fault, right? Um... They tell you to get to the airport four hours ahead of time. I think I tried to get to the airport an hour ahead of hour and a half ahead of time, but then I but then I missed my coach, so which meant I was gonna get late. So I, I would have been just on time if I left an hour and a half, but because I missed my coach, I got there late. Um, I got there too late, right? Um, which is again totally my fault. Um, the coach, I, no, actually I didn't miss my coach. My coach just took long. It was just like a slow driver. He was in loads of traffic, just like taking the piss uh, driving wise. I think maybe because he was maybe trying to get back on time with the timetable and shit. I don't know. So I, I, it just took really long to get there. So when I, by the time I got there, the gate just closed, right? So I missed my flight. And then I remember there was a couple in front of me um, and this girl was bawling her eyes out. I think they missed the flight too, right? And there was like a, another dude that was there, uh, obviously her boyfriend, I'm assuming, right? And he kind of had like a real like stony, like ghostly face on. And you can tell just looking from at them and their relationship and how they were arguing, you could tell that, you know, usually girls are more worried about time for the most part, about being early, being on time, and you know, that kind of stuff, and more preoccupied, that sort of stuff. Guys can be a little bit, you know, 
a little bit uh, Bob Marley about it, a little bit laid back. And I know I am. I can be sometimes a bit like that, right? So you could tell that he was the one that was like, nah, don't worry, babe. We're gonna, we have loads of time. We've got loads of time. And she was one that, no, dude, we need to go. We need to go. We need to go. And obviously she kind of like curtailed, you know, she kind of thought maybe, you know, we're going on holiday. Let me not be an annoying bitch. Let me just chill out. Let me like relax. He's always saying I'm too, uh, I'm too uptight. And for once she decided not to be uptight about it. And look what happened. And then when they got to the airport, it was late and she was right. And they missed their fucking flight to go to Barcelona. And of course, I think this was peak time. This is February, whatever it may have been. And I think it was one of those flights on a Saturday or something where it's the only flight of the day. And your next flight is the next day. And the other one was full. So it was just absolute shit show. And she was bawling her eyes out. Like, like, like grief crying. It was so sad, man. I felt so bad for the guys. But again, it's your own fault. My fault. Their fault. Patrick Keogh's fault. It's your own fault. You can't then decide to run onto the tarmac and start shouting obscenities at the plane or at the pilot or at the uh, check-in staff. It's insane. That's why I love watching um, um, Lost in the Airport, all that kind of, you know, those airport programs where people miss their flights and stuff because it's like the entitlement some people have with airplanes is nuts. Like they get there late and they still think that the airplane has to or the airline has to accommodate their lateness. If the whole entire plane is here on time, that means you're late. It doesn't mean anyone else is late. It means that you're late. And all the tickets, again, I don't know if maybe tickets need to say, because sometimes when you get an airline ticket, it would say the time the flight is leaving and also say the time the gate is closing, right? So that can kind of give you an idea of when you need to get there. But I think there needs to be maybe an option on the tickets to say minimum time for arrival at the airport. You have to be that this time to guarantee your kind of, to guarantee you get on the plane should be a set time, right? It has to be that thing. They have to do that thing for some people because some people can be a bit dim with it. But then I also remember on the flip side of it, um, going to, where did I go to? Oh, when I went to Barcelona for Primavera, right, when I met my friends the second time, I remember, think, I remember because the fucking budget airlines are like this, right? They have a really short window from the time the gate is announced to the time the gate is quote unquote closed. So I remember I got to the airport, you know, with plenty of time. I was walking around, I was buying a drink, I was having breakfast, so I was losing my phone, and the, the, the number didn't appear. So when you looked up on a departure thing, it'd say, oh, gate will, uh, gate, um, the gate will appear at a set time. Let's say half an hour from whenever I was, I was sitting down. So, okay, whatever, let me go and have a shit, you know, have a drink, eat something and relax. So I was doing it relaxing and then, uh, I don't know, time elapsed. So it, it was like 40 minutes had gone by. It wasn't exactly for half an hour and I forgot. I looked up again and it said gate closed. And I was like, fuck off. I got so panicky. I was like, no, I've been here. No way. This, this, this is ridiculous. No way. So imagine I was, I was on time the whole time, right, in the airport, relaxing, waiting. I looked at the, I looked at the departure board. My gate hadn't been announced yet. And it said it would be announced in half an hour. I then waited, but then I didn't check in half an hour. I checked in 40 minutes, and then it said the gate was closed. So I started panicking. I got all my shit and started running. And if you know, you know, running with a backpack and your luggage is horrible. Running in the airport with shit in your pockets and a backpack and your luggage is fucking worse. So I'm running in the airport, and the airport thing is just so many straight lines, right? Oh, loads of right angles. You're just fucking going... Oh, you're going up, right, up, left, 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 continually. And then I finally, finally get to my gate. And guess what happens when I get to my gate? The It's packed. It's a massive queue. No, no, no one's even boarded yet. It's just a huge queue. And I get there and I'm the only, and I get there and I'm like, they all see me because I think they probably hear my fucking elephant feet from, I don't know, 100 meters away. And I'm like, <laughs> panting and covered in sweat, absolutely covered in sweat. So, 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 so embarrassing. So that's the other side of it. Do you know what I mean? Where you're in the airport, you check your gate one minute, you check it again, it says the gate is closed and it's like, fuck you. You run and you get there covered in sweat and there's a massive queue at your gate anyway. But in that, in that kind of instance, even if the gate did close, I could have a reason to kind of like object to it because, you know, I'm sure they could tell from the time that I scanned in my boarding pass, my kind of like scan time, they could tell that I, I was there like two and a half hours before before the uh, gate was even closed. So the, um, the gate was even announced. So the fact that they would not allow me a plane, would, I don't think that was possible. I think they would they would kind of make an allowance in that regard. 100%. They have to anyway. Come on, man. I'd, maybe, yeah, because I guess, you know, when you're in an airplane and they announce someone's name and say, oh, it's Mr. So-and-so on the plane. Um, or no, when they're in the airport, uh, your flight's about to depart. Da, da, da. I'm, I'm assuming it's because you've 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 uh, checked in or you've kind of scanned your boarding pass uh, at immigration early ahead of time, so you weren't late. So they know that you're somewhere in the airport. Maybe you're having a shit. Maybe you fainted in the toilet. I don't know wherever maybe. But Jesus Christ, man, this Patrick dude's a fucking nutcase. Imagine running. 
Imagine running, running onto the tarmac of an airplane and trying to bang the doors down so they can get to open it. Like, what? Huh? How are they going to even let you in? Maybe because it was ta- still in taxi, so the, the, the ladder was still there and shit, but what are you going to do? Jump on the fucking wheels and, and kind of hoist himself up into the latch when it goes in? Like, absolute nutcase. But that kind of desperation usually comes because, you know, people don't have enough money. They usually just book a holiday and then they spend all of it, which I've I've not, which I don't do anymore. I save money and then go on holiday, and then you could have. And if 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 some emergency thing does happen, or you need, you know, you need to kind of book a like like this Berlin trip, you need to book a uh, a cab to go to the airport. You can do it, but that whole like just booking your holiday and only having the money for the holiday is not a good idea. Just save up, and then you even if you do miss your flight, you can just book another one. Like it's no big deal. Um, but yeah, absolute nutcase, man. Absolute fucking nutcase.